Hey you two friends, L let me show you what antenna that I I'm putting up now and I'm in process of doing that and it takes some time but this is what I, I decided to do from the ARRL antenna book this is the 21st edition on page 5-23 I decided to do the 7 megahertz loop but what I did was I, I made it bigger than what it said this is basically a vertical loop and I made it full full wave and it's a closed vertical loop and it says the loop need not be square it could be rectangular circular or some other distorted configuration between those shapes this is um, the picture here. Now I did it slightly different than than what they had. I made the the loop bigger. I made it to go into the 80 meter band, and I got about 500 and no, not 500. Sorry, I have about 250 to 260 feet, and it just puts it into the 80 meter band. It's it's around four megacycles. These are the patterns that the antenna can do. That's with the square antenna. So what I did was I used a fishing pole and I used a, a two ounce lead weight. I threw it as hard as I could and the first time I did it, it landed way into the neighbor's yard. So then the second time I did it, I didn't throw it as hard. And it went over there and it went into way up into that poplar tree, way in the back. And it's got to be about 45, 50 feet up in that tree. And it comes around the bottom of that tree. Now I used insulated number 14 wire. And, you know, they say, well, you should have it insulated from the tree, but it's insulated because the wire is insulated. But there's no way I could get 45 feet up in that tree. Is it way up in there? So the wire goes way up in the tree. Then it, it comes down. And then it's coming down this way. This is the bottom part of the loop and it goes to my pole and this is about 10 feet off the ground the the bottom loop so I extended the pole and the pole is up about 20 feet in the air now I'm not finished with it yet but I wanted to show you what I did so far I got insulators on there that I got from the G5 RV antenna that I had to take apart because the squirrels had ruined it. And I'm supporting that with a bungee kind of cord thing. And I'm up about 20 feet for the top wire and about 10 feet on the bottom one. And for the pole, I gave it more security here. I, I banged in a lot of nails. A lot of those nails that have the spirals on to hold it in so it won't come out. I added those two supports. And this railing is it's really sturdy now. It doesn't move. Now I could back up here. And it's got a slight curve at 20 feet. I could probably go up a little higher on that. Now, what I want to do now, see right now I just tied, tied the wire to the, to the pole here of the railing. But what I want to do is get a couple more, something to insulate the wire with. And I want to use two bungees 
two bungees I'll wrap around here and I'm going to make the loop you know tie these together and I'm going to use you know hook it to the coax wire and I'll put a connector on the end of the coax wire right in the middle so essentially I'll be vertically feeding this antenna by putting the connector in the middle of the antenna and and I read that was good for for distance for DX communication and then I'm going to add a, a gas discharge tube so that if it gets transients from uh, nearby lightning strikes the gas discharge tube will discharge the ground and speaking of grounds I'm going to pound in another eight foot rod into this flower bed here. This the soil's like moist and all that. I'm going to pound it into here and I'll have a a close by ground to attach the ground wire coming from the gas discharge tube. And that's as far as I got now but I wanted to update it and I think it's going to work okay. So that's it folks. Have a great day. Bye.